Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin, your co-host. And I'm Will Burnick. And today our special guest is Laura Lay, uh, Learning Differences Librarian, where autism goes to the library. We also have our guest, John Hammond, who will be reporting on Best Buddies, and our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. And the first thing I'd like to begin with is always ask, Will, about your shirt. What do you got this time? I'm glad you asked. This week's shirt is my I'm here to, is my I'm here to make a different shirt. I got this shirt from Cal State East Bay. It's a very special shirt. I like the theme of making a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. So now uh, we'll begin with our first guest, uh, Laura Lay, uh, Learning Differences Librarian. And Will, will you take it from there? Gladly. What is a Learning Differences Librarian? Do all libraries have this position? So the Learning Differences Librarian, um, I'm responsible in the library for ordering uh, materials, resources at the library that have to do with specific learning disabilities like dyslexia or dyspraxia, their co-occurrences like ADHD and autism spectrum disorders, intellectual and developmental disabilities. So that kind of encompasses a lot. I'm also in charge of um, getting programming at the library for the public to come and learn about these different learning differences um, or to for people who have learning differences to take part in events at the library. How did you get this position? What is your background? So I had actually been applying for jobs at San Francisco Public Library for quite a long time. Um, and it just happened that this position came up. It required uh, a master's in library science and experience as a librarianship, but also it required some experience working with different learning disabilities um, and I had previously worked as a dyslexia specialist for an organization called um, WILD which stands for Wisconsin Institute for Learning Disabilities and Dyslexia. Tell us about some of the library's activities with the autism community and other neurodiverse communities. Uh, so upcoming in the month of April for Autism Awareness the library is hosting uh, sensory friendly films for families and children at I think six different branch locations so those are based on the AMC uh, sensory friendly film model so uh, the size of the groups will be smaller uh, the volume will be a little bit lowered lights will be up and there will be an expectation that people can move around and talk freely during the program uh, we'll also have a craft program at the Mission Branch, spe specifically for Autism Awareness Month. Um, the library has had programs in the past for individuals to learn about autism spectrum disorders. We have an upcoming program in May um, about ADHD, adult ADHD and relationships. Um, and so let me just think what else might be happening coming up. Um, that's all that I can think of right now, uh, but all of these events can be, can be found on our website, which is sfpl.org. Um, and sometimes you can search for them by looking for inclusive programs or disability awareness or disability interest. On, there's, that's something that you can search in our calendar. Tell us, tell us about how individuals can become part of the Learning Differences activities. So everyone is welcome for any program at the library. Um, so that's why we really work on having inclusivity in the library. Um, we don't turn anyone away for any program um, unless I think there is maybe some exceptions with adults going to children's programs. But other than that, you know, the library is for everyone in San Francisco. It's free for everyone. And we really try to meet the needs of, all, of our community. So I understand that the uh, library has some community outreach programs. Could you tell us about that, Laura? Yes. Yeah, so we try to partner with different community organizations. And one way that we do that is through our iPad committee, which stands for Inclusive Programming of All Ages with Developmental Disabilities. Uh, so we have 
the main library where I'm located. Mm. Uh, but there are 27 branch libraries in our system, so we have different library staff from those branches that form the committee, and also one representative from the ARC of San Francisco, mm -hmm. and that's one way that we plan events and programs that happen system-wide, and also we plan different ways to partner with different community organizations that we may have not already reached. Mm -hmm. um, so in the past, we have done things like a summer reading kickoff um, in conjunction with the ARC and the Pomeroy Center. We have had art exhibits um, with artists from Creativity Explored um, that was displayed at the main library. And also, I think two different branch libraries did art mm -hmm. exhibits. Um, let's see here. We um, have different programs, like we have a program that happens every month called Readers of the Pack. Um, and that's where a dog, a very special dog, Johnny Justice, he comes to the library and kids get a chance to read aloud to the dog, mm -hmm. um, which helps with social skills and reading skills, um, where a child may be self-conscious reading aloud to their peers. A dog is going to listen and never judge you. So mm -hmm. it's a really great program. Um, and that's with Four Paws Learning. They're in Marin County. Um, so we have a committee that just works together to make sure that we have inclusive programming in the library system-wide. This is really good to hear. Have uh, organizations typically reached out to you at the library, or has the library done an outreach program to find uh, appropriate organizations to reach out to, or how does that work? Yes, yeah, sometimes organizations come to us, but we are really working more, and in the future we want to reach out to more organizations in the community. We want to make sure that we are having programs at the library that reflect the community that we live in, and we're, we're not leaving anyone out. Upcoming, we will be talking with um, a group of clients at the ARC and just asking questions also um, at SFUSD to make sure that we're providing programs that people actually want. You know, sometimes we come up with ideas that we think are good, but we really want to, we want to ask people that come to the library, what do you want? Mm -hmm. um, so we're working to, to do more of that and to find more organizations that we can work with. And you did mention that you typically reach out to these other organizations, but as say one of our viewers belonged to an organization that was interested in doing a partnership uh, with the library, what's the best way of them doing that and reaching out to you? Yeah, um, so they can definitely reach out to me personally. I'm located at the main library in the Bridge at Main, uh, which is the Learning and Literacy Center on the fifth floor of the main library. It's a new, uh, fairly new within the last Last January is when it opened. Um, so we have a reception desk. You can ask for me, Laura Lay. So you can contact me by phone. My phone number is 415-557-4203. Or by email, which is laura dot lay at sfpl.org. Really good. One thing uh, I think our viewers might be interested in, it sounds like, San Francisco Public Library is really uh, leading the country, uh, from what I understand, with programs of this type. Do you know anything about uh, how the program originated and how it's evolved? Uh, so the program originated uh, through a grant um, from the Charles Schwab Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and there was just a push to have a learning differences resource collection at the library, which previously didn't exist and that was the first resource collection of the kind in the country um, and actually uh, my position learning differences librarian I'm that's the first position of its kind in the country um, that's not to say that other libraries aren't working on making libraries more inclusive mm -hmm. and accessible they are and in the future I think we're going to see more of that um, as we see more of a need and the interest in it I understand that the library has some recurring programs, too. Could you tell us about those? Yes. Yeah, so we have three programs that happen each week that are inclusive programs that are um, with our partnership with the ARC of San Francisco. So instructors from the ARC come to the library with uh, their curriculum and teach. Right now it's computer basics, which happens on Thursdays. And then on Mondays the classes are 
nutrition and healthy choices, and also a meditation and mindfulness class. So those are classes that happen every week and that are ongoing um, and that are really great inclusive programs that happen for adults at the main library. Um, we also have an ongoing, I mentioned before, the Readers mm -hmm. of the Pack program that happens every second Saturday of the month in the main children's center. And there is an inclusive story time that happens every month at the Mission Branch. Excellent. And um, we also discussed offline that uh, some of your staff members are being trained to deal with the community. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so we had a training and we have ongoing training scheduled um, to train staff to learn more about autism and how to reach the autism community at the library and just to make sure that we're being sensitive to all of our patrons' needs and wants. Excellent, excellent. Would you like to take it from there? I would. What can you tell us about Autism Awareness Month? So for Autism Awareness Month, we have the sensory friendly films happening at different locations and also a craft program happening at the Mission Branch. Um, and we love to highlight these programs in April for Autism Awareness, but we would love in the future to have even more programs just on a regular basis. How, how do you participate in Autism Awareness Month? Um, so I have been working on the iPad committee um, that I mentioned before to help coordinate these programs and bring them to the various branches. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, could you once again give our viewers and uh, listeners uh, how best to contact you and the people at the library? Yeah, so please feel free to come and visit me at the Bridge at Main at the Main Library, which is 100 Larkin Street. I'm on the fifth floor. Um, otherwise, you can give me a call, 415-557-4203, um, or email me, laura lay at sfpl.org. And we welcome any recommendations of programs, anything that you want to see at the library, just if you want to come visit and see what the Learning Differences resource mm -hmm. collection looks like, or even just a chat. So please come visit. Like so. Well, thank you. Uh, I look forward to hearing a lot more from you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. In our next segment, uh, we'll, we'll be talking with John Hammond and Sarah Hoffman of Best Buddies about their background in Best Buddies, as well as the upcoming Friendship Walk. Will, will you take it from there? Sure thing, Keith. Sarah, tell us about your role in Best Buddies. Why, thank you, Will. My role in Best Buddies is I'm a buddy ambassador, and I got involved in Best Buddies from 2010, I was matched with a terrific best buddy. Her name is Alia M. Al Sharif, and we've been buddies for 10 years. I am a bud currently a buddy director for USF's Friendship Walk chapter and a buddy director. How are you going to be participating in the Friendship Walk? Well, this year we have our annual thr Friendship Walk for best buddies that promotes inclusion for one-to-one -one people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We provide leadership skills and jobs opportunities. And this year it's going to be in Golden Gate Park on April 23rd. Well, will you be participating in the walk? Well, of course. I would love. I am more than happy to, and I'm actually starting a walk team, well, this year. John, tell us about how how someone can get involved in best in in the Best Buddies Walk. So, so how people can get involved in the Best Buddies Walk is you go to bestbuddiescalifornia.org and you click on Friendship Walks and SF, and that's how you can register for the walk. And I'm one of the Best Buddies co-chairs for this year's walk, and our theme is Be Well. Can you tell us more about that, uh, John? The theme and. Um how we chose the theme, and our hashtag is going to be Best Buddies North Cal Walk 2016. Very good. For Twitter people. Thank you. Oh, could you repeat that for us? Best Buddies um, hashtag North Cal Walk 2016. Excellent. Now, Sarah, you told us that you are putting together a team. Could you tell us a little bit about that? That's correct, Keith and Will. I'm actually starting a team with my current work through Madame Tussauds Wax Attraction. It's on Pier 30 
down by Pier 39 on Fisherman's Wharf. That sounds interesting. So, so what are you doing there? I am a greeter. I help people when they passerbys when they come in, tell them about our amazing wax attraction figures, wax replicas we have, and give them a tour. Excellent. And so you're creating the team out of the people that you work with at uh, the wax museum. Yes. Very good. Very good. So. Can you tell us how you got involved in Best Buddies originally, Sarah? Um, I got involved, yeah, sure. I'd be more than pleased and wel willing to um, share that with you guys today. I got involved with Best Buddies through, I was a student at Wallenberg High School. In 2009, I was in a transition program there to help me to enter into college. And when I was there, my teacher told me about Best Buddies, and I thought, how can I get more involved? How can I attend their events? And ever since I got involved, I am thrilled. I am so happy to get a job and make friends, and I don't feel that I'm isolated anymore by society. Really good. And how would some of our uh, viewers who may be here in the Bay Area or maybe elsewhere, how would they find out about Best Buddies? Um, the viewers... Uh, who want to know more about our programs, programs, they should go to www.bestbuddies.org, and you'll find out more from there. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Sarah, no. can, you, can you tell us, a, John, can you tell us about your participation in stopping the R word? Yes, well, I can. So how I stop the R word is you can go to nrword.org to sign a pledge. That's how people can stop it. John, can you tell us a little bit more about that program? I mean, what does it involve? I mean, how, how it did involves, it come about? How it involved the Shriver R Word Act. It was a help pass um, when I went to testify to state California state law for Best Buddies. Thank you. Sarah, did you have any involvement with this program too? Yes, I did, Keith. In fact, the R Word is very hurtful. I want people to know that we need to eliminate that word in our everyday language, and when we see somebody on the bus, instead of calling them the R word, which is, as we all know, retarded, we need to take that word away and replace it with respect because everybody needs respect, dignity, and um, trust in this world. Excellent. Do you have many um, Best Buddies members in the group that either you've been in before or are now who have been affected by this, have been uh, uh, criticized and teased with this? Yes, I have. In fact, I myself have been called the R word, and it was really hurtful. And I, I can share with the folks at home that I personally experienced it a day um, I was at John Adams. Mm -hmm. Somebody called me this hurtful word. They um, made fun of me. A girl turned, was in line, turned Walking behind me, she pulled a hood over my face of a jacket, and then she made fun of the way I walked. I stopped her, told her, that is not nice, do not call me that, and I got in contact with the campus police, said, this got to stop, I do not like this. So we have a lot of people, you that. thank you, I appreciate it, a lot of people have been hurt by this, we need to encourage our family and our friends to use the word respect. Yes, indeed. Have you seen it getting any better, or is it still a major problem? It, it's still a problem. In fact, it affects so many people. I have friends in Miami, one who continuously gets called the R word and the N word mm. a lot. And he gets called it so much that when people out in Miami, Florida call him that, he cries and breaks down so it's got to be educated enough absolutely we commend you both and the organization as a whole for what your great efforts are thank you and now for our final segment we will have stacy kennedy our cultural correspondent give an update on relevant cultural events to our community take thank it from there thank you keith hello everybody 
today my or tonight my cultural reports are is um I wanted to bring up something that's already passed which happened Tuesday March 29th there was a filming of a film called Save Me Mine filmed by Jeff Smith and it was by um it was premiered at the Bankhead Theater at Futures Explored it was a moment of triumph for Jeff Smith one of 25 developmental disabled adults um whose films are usually premiered at Travolta's Inclusion. It was this third annual film this past uh, Tuesday. And if you want more information, you can, you can go to uh, Futures, uh, this dash, not this, dash, future-explored.org. Reminder of Anne Lore Dan Davin's book, Being Seen, which is coming out soon. She has a website now called which is at www.annlorddavin.com. And another reminder on April 2nd is an Autism Awareness Day event happening in San Rafael. The title of the event is Autism Ness, as in awesomeness, something like that. So Autism Ness. And the address is 10 Bayview Street, San Rafael, California, obviously, 94901. St. Luke Presbyterian Church, and it starts at 1 that day and goes until 3 p.m. And Laura herself will, will have a table of her own that day. You will see her that day, along with a group of performers who will be expressing their talents that day. So come April 2nd to Autism Ness at uh, 10 Bayview Street Avenue in San Rafael. April 9th is the next job club meeting at the Ark of San Francisco, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And as was mentioned before from Sarah and John, the Best Buddies Friendship Walk on April 23rd in Golden Gate Park Music Concourse in Bandshell, right? Yes, that's correct. And uh, registration, I understand, is free and there's no minimum fundraising, right? Or Regi no, um, actually, Stacy, mm -hmm. everybody needs to register to um, participate in the walk on www.bestbuddies.friendshipwalk forward slash Bay Area. Right, John? Yes. That's one more time. That is www.bestbuddies.friendshipwalk forward slash Bay Area. Thank you, sir. And we'll see you on April 23rd. Great. Thank you for that clarification. And that's all I have for today. And thank you, everyone. Well, folks, that's this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm your host, Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And I'm John Hamlin. I'm Sarah Hoffman with Best Buddies California. Stacey Kennedy. Thank you very much, and until we see you again, have a great week.